Hi everyone, it's Gina for Genealogy Bank. Do you know much about the 1910s, that decade right before the Roaring Twenties? There's a lot of interesting history going on in that decade, and some of it is history that you can relate to. There's a world war, there's a pandemic, there's the sinking of the Titanic. You know, as genealogists, we're used to finding names, dates, and places in historical newspapers for our ancestors, and that's great. But we can also add some social history to our genealogy to make it more interesting to our family. What is social history? It's historical events and how they impacted the lives of everyday people. Everyday people like your ancestors. Let's take some time right now to look at some of the historical events going on in that decade, the 1910s, and see how you can add some of that to your family history. Let's go to the website. So what was going on in the 1910s? Well, you might know that World War I began and ended in that decade. Though the U.S. didn't enter the war until 1917, the war had been going on since 1914. Historical newspapers provide us the opportunity to learn more about the war and how it affected our ancestors' community. You may be familiar with at least one type of World War I record, that of draft registrations. But remember that it's not just the soldier ancestor you should look at in your family you should also look at those left behind on the home front. Not everyone went off to war. Women, children, and men who were not eligible for service kept the home front running. They may have been involved in everything from knitting their bit for the Red Cross to taking care of jobs left behind by soldiers. And in some cases, American young men went off to Canada and the UK to join the war before the US officially joined. All of that social history can add to your family history. What else is going on during this decade? Well, you've had your own personal experience with a pandemic and the 1910s had their own pandemic called the Spanish flu. Now, the flu didn't originate with Spain, but the name stuck since Spain wasn't involved in the war. According to the CDC, an estimated 500 million were infected with influenza, and about 50 million worldwide died from it. Here in the United States, 675,000 people died from the flu. Sometimes when we add social history, we take an event or an activity that our ancestor was involved in and talk about what it was like for our ancestor, like taking newspaper articles about World War I or the influenza pandemic. But in some cases, we may not have actual proof of our ancestor's involvement with, with a historical event. But Adding that history can help our younger generation see what it was like for our ancestors during their place and time. And one example is Oreo cookies. Now, my son's favorite cookie is Oreo. And guess what? It made its debut in 1912. And we can see in this Boston Public Market advertisement, if we scroll down, the Oreo biscuit, which is what Oreos, Oreos were originally called, and then they were called in 1921 Oreo sandwiches, is listed as new and delicious. And I think most of us can uh, agree with that. So here's something that our ancestor would have been able to buy at the market that we can still buy today. And although you may not be really sure if your ancestor enjoyed Oreos and milk, you can at least talk about how your children's favorite cookie was available to their great and great great grandparents. Some things never change, and that's the beauty of social history and genealogy.
As you can see, there was a lot going on in that decade from 1910 to 1919. Our ancestors experienced everything from a world war to a worldwide pandemic. And then there were other things going on that your ancestor would have been aware of by reading their local newspaper. Things like the sinking of the Titanic and the ratification of prohibition. When we add these events, these historical events, to our family history story, it helps to bring our ancestors to life. It makes our genealogy more interesting to our kids and grandkids and other family members who aren't as interested in genealogy. To do this, take some time to read through the newspapers from your ancestor's hometown. And then take some of those articles and incorporate them into your family history. When we do this, when we tell the, lot, the story of everyday people's lives using genealogy and history, we make their lives more exciting and we tell a better story. Good luck with your genealogy. Take care.